I thought tonight would be just a, a nice way to open up and hear from Kid President, right? Can't get mad at Kid President. Um, good evening, everyone. Good to see you all. Hopefully you had a chance to get one of two things. Uh, you should have a sheet that was on your seat that had a, a bunch of numbers, which I'll talk to a little bit later, and a note card. So if you have uh, a question on that note card, we'll have someone grab them in a second so you can just raise it above your head, but I'm going to keep going because I want to prioritize those questions and the time spent on that, okay? So with that said, um, I just want you to digest this quote for a minute. Keyword. Keyword. When you think about a family, you have tough conversations. There are moments when we don't agree. There are moments when we feel that some information was given, some information was not. But then you come together with your family to have these conversations. My hope is that tonight we'll have a similar conversation that this family has, and that's my family. So in this picture, you'll see everyone uh, from my dad. Hopefully you can recognize him. You see my mom. You see my cousins, my aunts. My mom has seven sisters. And at the head of the table is my grandmother. I put that video, this picture up there for a few reasons, one of which it is National Women's History Month. And I thank every woman in this room for being great. The second, my grandmother passed away in December. She lost her battle to cancer. And I was sleeping just like three or four nights ago and she was in my dream and she, she told me one word and that was to listen. So tonight's presentation is about me listening to you to make sure we're doing right by you and right by our kids. So let's continue with transparency as a family. So what's next? Again, I want to recap from where we started last time. Um, go through a few updates, talk about how will we make the money work. How many people have come to previous town hall meetings? Just right by a show of hands. Have you seen that segment come up multiple times around how money will work? I will give you even more answers today, okay? And then lastly, leave, leave with a little bit of good news. And it's ironic that we're in this space because the good news is related to Longfellow. So uh, with that said, let's get started. So what was next? So this is the, these are the things that we've been covering for some time in our town halls. Um, and as they turn, some of them were, one was red last time and now it's green. And a few others were yellow and now they're green. So in short, what we've been doing over the past few months is making sure our CBS, our Community Business Partner School, uh, partnership is going strong. Um, we're getting input from our district union leaders. We actually had our monthly meeting last Tuesday. Uh, school leaders, teachers, scholars, we're starting all of our task force that are beginning next week and I'll speak to them next uh, in a few slides. And then the only two areas where we're still working is we're, we're finalizing our budget process. Not necessarily our budget, but our bu budget process. And I'll explain why that is challenging. And then some personnel shifts. Again, I'll explain here as well. So with that said, I want to first begin with just clarifying the roles that I, the role that I play and how this all will wind up in creating the, the narrative of what we're talking about today. Uh, if we could turn on the lights, it's a little hard to, to see the one side. So on the left-hand side, if you look at the left-hand side, that gives you like the traditional public school, school board lineup there. You see the school board, the superintendent, the schools, and the community. Is that better? Awesome. Uh, it was the eye chart test. That's why we had the lights on. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see under House Bill 70, uh, the CEO assumes most of those powers and then hires and, and, and builds an administrative leadership team and then schools and communities. So you can see the delineation between the two. Here's the difference that it creates. So on the left-hand side, the responsibilities change, and on the right-hand side, responsibilities also change, right? Um, on the left-hand side, levies and tax abatements, that falls under the school board's privy. That's, that's what they have their hands on, and that's a conversation directly with the community, right? Because that's where the, the money will come from, from the community. Um, that conversation is back and forth between the community. I have nothing to do with that piece. That's why I don't speak too much to it. And I'll, I'll keep it moving. On the right-hand side, um, my primary focus, our primary focus, is our outcomes for our kids. That's the top of that pyramid. Next to that is because I have the operational, managerial, and instructional uh, authority to make sure that happens. But I will only make sure that happens with you to make sure we're all on the same page. Hence why this structure every single month happens at the same time every second Thursday to make sure we're having a transparent, open, and honest conversation on a monthly basis. 
At the end of the day, um, the school board is held accountable by the community voters. And for me, I'm held accountable by the Academic Distress Commission, which outlined and approved the Lorraine Promise in October. Um, and that was the driving force to create the direction that we're now pushing on. In March, March 19th, we'll have an ADC meeting so you can even hear more about how those processes and my involvement and their involvement and evaluation takes place. Uh, but nonetheless, I just wanted to clarify that because I, I felt like I got a number of texts, uh, phone calls, emails, that there seemed to be a lack of clarity and I wanted to provide some level of clarity around this. So with that said, as a family, we're gonna have a conversation. In short, we're gonna talk about some oper operational, managerial, and a few instructional pieces with you. At the end of the day, I want to simplify that side and really just focus to make sure that our scholars are at the center of every single conversation. There's no need for any other conversation because we realize every single day we wake up and we go to sleep thinking about and should be thinking about our kids first. That conversation is with us, the community. And community, I think of broadly, not just those that are in the community, but teachers, leaders, scholars themselves. Everyone in this room is a part of this community that informs how we need to improve our outcomes for our kids. So I'm glad that you're here tonight. I thank you for being here. So we're just going to talk about what we're going to do. I refuse to talk about anything else uh, because I think that's the only thing that is important. Let's focus on the right things and move forward. Is everyone with me for that? So these are the three things I promised you if you've been to a town hall. Three things I have been consistent in promising you every single time information as fast as I can, but as slow as I must. What do I mean by that? There are times when I have to wait on information because I want to make sure it's right. What I hate doing is potentially putting out information and it's incorrect and I have to retract it and put something new up. That's unfair to you as a community member and it's definitely unfair to the people that are involved. So there are moments when I do pause, I do wait and hold information until I'm able to release it with confidence. The second piece is um, the accuracy and making sure that everything is planned, right? Uh, if you are part of a task, raise your hand if you're part of one of the task force that are coming up in the next few weeks, that's part of our planning. That's happening now. Not July, not August, now, because we have to get ready for our kids. And then lastly, feedback is a gift. At the end of our time together today, around 545, we're going to handle the survey because I do want to hear from you. I do want more feedback. Uh, we need to get better. We have to get better. This is our, our family table. This is our, our Sunday dinner. And at the end of the Sunday dinner, usually there's a really good sweet potato pie. Um, so I'm just asking if you have some. Um, didn't have lunch today. Um, but seriously, the, the sweet potato pie tonight is the survey. And uh, it would be great to get your feedback to understand if we're going the right way. So, updates. Uh, tradition of leaders into the district. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation around who those folks are and what those positions are, and I'll speak to one financially how they're done. Uh, but more importantly, there are um, chiefs that are appointed, have been selected uh, based on our interview processes, three of which are folks that are part of the district already. So our chief operations officer is Mr. Jeff Hawks, who's over here. Uh, chief of Staff is Alana Gonzalez, who's over here, and our Chief Strategy Officer, Josh Hill, strategically has pneumonia. Um, that's not strategic at all, but unfortunately he's very ill, so we wish him well, we do miss him, but uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, those are our folks internally who apply for jobs and are a part of our district. Um, and then we have a few folks from outside. Um, that are joining us and joining forces to ensure that we are doing the right thing and doing the right thing by kids. Um, three individuals from the outside have been selected uh, outside of the district to be part of the senior leadership team. Um, Dr. LaKimba Brown from Washington, D.C., she's not here. She's still moving and won't start till March 12th. Um, and then Jackie Yonker from Greater Cleveland. I don't think she's here tonight, but uh, we'll see her at times tomorrow. And then uh, Miss Arliss Prass, who's our chief family officer, who will be focusing on school culture, uh, community outreach, and uh, making sure that we have uh, all the things we need to make sure our kids are successful in school from the culture side, the family side of things. So those are the new additions on the district side. Uh, there are potential additional roles that we know we need. As we look at the Lorraine Promise, there's things that it demands and, and, and asks of us, one of which is we have to continue to figure out how to get better. We don't have an office dedicated to thinking, okay, what is next? What do we need to do that, to push the envelope even further? 
Uh, secondly, commitment two th directly relies on us thinking about early childhood education differently, and we need someone to lead that work very specifically. And of course, with the chief family officer and with the conversation throughout the past six, seven months around how do we help our kids be better prepared to receive and become educated by starting with uh, classroom management, behavior, things of that nature, we need someone to oversee that work. Okay? So those positions are, uh, are to come potentially in time, again, potentially. With that said, um, school leader updates, school leaders internally to the district, externally to the district have been interviewing. We're still interviewing through this process, but I wanted to make sure I transparently shared with you the timeline for these pieces so that you were aware, especially for those that are thinking like, where am I in this process? Here's the process. Um, we've been interviewing since February. Uh, we continued this past week. We had four uh, internal and external interview days. We will uh, continue to uh, interview till uh, late March, but we will notify our internal principals their status uh, between the 19th and the 23rd. We feel that we owe that to our, our leaders in our schools first. They should get information first uh, before we proceed. You'll notice towards the end of this, we'll be begin to have some academic and uh, scholar and family engagement um, interviews start to begin, but we also realize as we go into April, we'll probably have another round of those as well because we wanna make sure that all of our internal candidates have an opportunity to apply, okay? So that's school leader updates wise. Task force updates. This was from last meeting. We were talking about the number of teachers that responded to the survey that we gave out. I wanna say it was a little over a month ago. Um, out of 490 plus teachers, we had 327 of them respond, which I thought that was extremely positive. Uh, and of that 327, I better not move close to that. Of that 327, 111 have raised their hand and said, I wanna be part of a task force to push one of the initiatives forward. So I think that was also very positive. Um, given that situation, we have uh, started from you know, going through the phases, right? Starting initially from the idea, the data phase, the idea phase, um, some back and forth communication, and then ultimately thinking about how to pilot these pieces, and we're still there. We're still thinking about like, how do we figure out what these initiatives really will look like before we go full implementation. The last thing we wanna do is go full bore on something and realize we made a huge mistake along the way. Um, so over the next month and a half, we'll take some time, really think deeply with our task force to make sure that we're doing the right things before moving forward. Uh, with that said, uh, here are the task force meeting uh, updates. So folks that are part of a task force, here are your meeting times. I just wanna make sure you probably received an email. Raise your hand if you received an email about your task force meeting, good. It's great. Uh, so you know these meetings are happening. Um, and for some that you just might wanna check it out, that's okay too, please do. We wanna make sure that you're well informed of what's going on within the district uh, in a transparent fashion, form or fashion. Uh, those are the five initiatives. Again, the conversation will be rich and ultimately it'll be your voice that will drive how those initiatives move forward. Uh, selection of school leaders, I, I mentioned, these are again the three big remaining critical decisions I see getting us through June. Selection of school leadership, development of our dashboard, which I'll, I'll give you a preview of in a second, and then our instructional approach. What is, it, what is instruction really gonna look like going into next year? Let's get that right. So with that said, big five initiatives, you all know they're aligned to the five uh, pieces of the Lorraine Promise. Uh, last time, last town hall, I walked through this a little bit in more detail, but in short, the question has really come up is, you know, uh, how, how do you get these initiatives off the ground? So if you start on the left-hand side here, you'll see these are the big five initiatives. We get the task force together, that's the second column, if you will, and then we invest in someone who is gonna develop a project plan, so we will have senior project managers leading these projects to make sure things get done. Uh, we find the leader, and it'll fall in one of the chief offices, and then create a budget for it. And you'll see in a second how we're outlaying the high-level budget so you have a chance to grapple with it a bit. And we select a partner. This partner is gonna be typically an external group that give us either a, a, an eye into what we need to do, what we're doing wrong, or what we need to do better, and help guide us. So if you can imagine this partner being like training wheels to push us on the bike, and then the training wheels fall off, and then we can ride it. Does that make sense? It's not a long-term group of people that year after year, uh, silver and strong, we won't be doing that, right? It'd be a one-time uh, one partner who will support us for a period of time, and then we'll move on. Does that make sense? For those that smiled at Silver and Strong, you know what I'm talking about, right? So then uh, we'll go from there and begin to pilot this process, and ultimately full implementation if everything goes well. 
So with that said, those are the big five initiatives that you see right next to the darker blue there and the components of it. And you all, most of you who have been to these meetings have seen it. I won't go in great detail, but those are the basic components of each of which. So if you're on one of the task force, you will be part of the conversation about those three components or two components, depending on the initiative that you see. The one that is starting to move a little bit is around the dashboard because that's, honestly, it's a lot of putting all of our numbers into one warehouse. And there has been some movement. So last time I tried this, it didn't work, but let's see if it works this time. So you can actually just get a glimpse of what our dashboard will look like in which everyone, again, in a transparent fashion, will have access to. And as a community member, it will be on the website so you can see it as well. And of course, it's not working today. But I promise it's real, it does work. Um, and an unexpected error has occurred. Uh, but nonetheless, it is still in the process of being built, but nonetheless, all of you, again, will have access to it. But these, again, are the components of each of those five initiatives. So, so the numbers tell a story. And I want to make sure the story is clear around these numbers. He's my favorite, I'm sorry. Um, I want to make sure everyone understands tra transparently where money is going and where it's not. So we're going to break this down a bit. So um, in short, and I try to bucket this just at a high level so we don't get too weedy into some of these pieces, but basically uh, we have two big funding streams. From one, general operating funds, GOB money. That's money that comes from taxpayer dollars. That's money that comes from the state. Um, and then we have federal funds that come from uh, from the feds. And then we get grants and other things like that are on the other side. On the right hand side, that money is usually a lot more restrictive. There's a lot more rules to it. For example, um, Title II is one that you can only use for professional development and things of that nature. But GOB, you can kind of spend it on personnel and do a lot more dynamic things with it. But we have two basic funding streams, and they each have a part, right? Um, and, and I generalize U.S. Department of Ed, but there's other components that go in that. But I wanted to show you where um, money comes from. The one thing that I thought a lot about, and this again, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. There is one, uh, one piece that I feel that I need to be honest with you all about. As you all know, I do not live in the city of Lorraine. Um, and I've been fighting that challenge personally because I feel very committed to this community. Um, so I had a chance to sit with Josh as we were going through numbers and thinking about taxes and all these other things. And I said, Josh, what if, what if, what is the average price or uh, value of a home and he gave me that number and I said how much is the property tax for that home and I said Josh can you now deduct that from my paycheck because I feel that it's only my if I can't if I don't live in the city I should at least pay my portion of property taxes and so I, I've committed to that because um, more importantly I think it's important to say that I, I am I want to be part of this community and so please know that, that, is, that is happening, and, and more importantly, I think we all need to contribute to pay our own personal property taxes to ensure that we are getting our kids what they need. So with that said, here's how the money breaks down. And for some people that don't like numbers, I promise I'll be very, very gentle with numbers. It's a lot, especially our ELA teachers in the room. I understand your pain. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm going to show you in one second. I'm going to make it bigger. I just want to show you all the lines to it so that everyone can kind of see from the big picture. But here are the two big areas I think are the, the biggest and most important pieces for us to focus on. The personnel so services that come out of our general operating bu um, budget, which are our salaries and wages, and then our purchase services, right? So that's all of our textbooks and things of that nature. I want to focus on those two areas very, very briefly um, on where that money actually is going at this time. So if you look at first um, personnel services, they go for certified and non-certified personnel. So certified are our teachers, are non-certified are our district administration. If you look at the two bars there on the left-hand side, that shows you how much money we spent from uh, this the previous school year into this school year. About how about uh, 1.72 million dollars on. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the the percent change was 1.72 million dollars from one year to the next. This year, we're projecting that we're only going to be about 1.71. So we're staying about even. We're not spending any new money on certified teachers. On the left-hand side, we spent about an increase of about a million dollars, and I've reduced that increase to about 230K. Because I feel like from a district side of things, we shouldn't be spending a ton more money on non, 
on teachers, uh, I'm sorry, on things outside of teachers and things that touch school. So you see that I've actually decreased the amount we're spending on the district side, okay? With that said, here's the breakdown of what those things are spent on. So you actually have those numbers as well. Our, uh, we had a superintendent position, we have a chief of schools, which will, is a very comparable position. Um, there's net, uh, net zero change. The salary between those two individuals will not be different. The only challenge that we have is that our new chief of schools will start mid-year, so there's going to be a little bit of buffer that we have to pick up for this year, but the annual uh, money spent on that person, net zero. As far as our treasurer, ex executive assistant, our director of operations, um, and our executive director of HR, those positions went away, and you see on the right-hand side what those positions became and the percent increase. So by creating those positions and adding additional responsibilities, yes, they will receive more money. Our chief family officer is coming out of a grant, so it doesn't actually hit our GOB, so there's actually zero cost to the general operating fund that you pay taxes into. Where we make the savings and balance this out is that I reorganized a couple positions that I won't bring back. And the reason why I'm not giving you the title of those positions is because it's very sensitive HR information, but I promise in future town halls I will re release those positions. But no, that's going to create the savings that will balance the other positions. So you see at the bottom, there's a net change of negative $140,000. Okay? Everyone see that? Just want to make sure everyone grab that. Purchase services. So this, now I'm moving from personnel to purchase services. In the 2017-18 uh, school year, we spent about $43 million. And that was uh, over year over year from 2016 to 2017, that was about a $2.7 million increase. About 6.4% more was spent from 16-17 to 17-18. But going in from 17-18 to 17-19, I'm cutting that down to 269K. So it's about 0.62% increase in spending. I'm going to do that by repositioning some of the money we currently spend. There are some programs that will go away. There will be some programs that will be added, but at the same time, the change is zero. This is a very, very high level. There's a ton of other programs that are moving, leaving, coming, going, but again, the same result will occur. Zero net change. Some of those numbers are purely estimates because until we get final figures and drafts are, are finalized, they may go up or down, but please know that that number at the bottom, that total change, will stay green. Federal grants. This is a little easier, a little less uh, complicated because we don't have a ton of money in, in our uh, federal grant side of things. You'll notice in our 2018 fiscal year, which is this current year, we have about nine and a half million dollars. However, our projected fiscal year uh, amount for 2019 goes down pretty significantly. Uh, so we were, we're looking to receive less than, I'm uh, sorry, for about $600,000 less. So we're losing a ton of title funds. And for that reason, I had to have a very tough conversation with our Title I teachers and our academic coaches originally to talk about how that impacts them because they come out of that fund. Um, with that said, we're reorganizing some positions so that we can hopefully bring a lot of those fo folks back in different roles. But because of the loss, and again, this has nothing to do with general operating funds. It has all everything to do with the federal government. And as we're seeing title shrink, and I think that's going to be a continuous trend uh, as long as our president, who he is and who he has as our as a secretary of education, will continue to decline. Um, so this is just the reality that we're faced with. So we have to think about using our money differently. OK, again, I reiterate this is projected because a lot of our federal fund information doesn't come in until about June um, and that, you know, that timing never really matches. We just can't. We just kind of play catch up with the feds. OK. So here are the recommended next steps that I have. And then I'm, I'm going to move to some very brief announcements and questions, and then we'll move on, um, hopefully. Uh, continue to provide timely, transparent information publicly. And I say that, I'm hoping that it, this one works this time, because um, everything that I'm talking about now and more is on our website. Oh my, hold on. Let me toggle, because I do want to show you this. Give me one second. Does anyone have any elevator music? Jay Nimini, I'm counting on you. I don't know where you are. There you go. <laughs> All right. If you go 
If you go to the website, you go to the first page, the first thing that pops up is the Lorraine Promise. If you click more and you go to this page, you'll see the budget, you'll see everything that I've approved since I've been here in August, every item, uh, the monthly newsletter, and I apologize, I'm a few days late on this month because of uh, uh, preparing for a few different things. All of the events that we have, our new chief announcement, this is important, this, this page is important because it gives you insight on the potential new partners that might be coming in. And if you click on it, which I will for you today, you'll see every new partner that might come in, their proposals and why. The proposals are purely proposals. We're not necessarily signing up for all these things. These are purely proposals so people can see what is going on. What are we potentially signing up for? Um, so I want to make sure that's transparent and out for all to see. And then, um, this is a new tab, because I felt this was important. We get a number of public information requests, and, and I want to make sure that people get the responses, and everyone can see our responses. So if you click on this tab, for people that ask for public information, we're going to start posting the question and the actual response. So you'll see here the actual questions that have been asked, and the responses, and then I believe at the bottom, you'll see all the attachments that you could ever want to see in your life. Uh, there they are that are attached to any question that you have out there in a transparent manner for all to see. Um, what else is here? Um, teacher survey results that we gave, our priorities, any video. So every month uh, I do a video with Joe Bach and, and his wonderful scholars to just give an update of what's going on, what's on my mind, what's going on in the district and what we're pushing to push towards all the town hall presentations that we have, the calendar for next year, the Lorraine Promise, uh, and what I had for lunch is also under one of those tabs. But in all seriousness, uh, all the information that you might want would be right here, the first page that you click on when you get to the Lorraine Promise page. I'm sorry, when you get to, the, to our website, which is this little button here, which is the first one, that pops up right away. And just click on more. Cool? So continue to commit to providing transparent and timely and public information to all. Uh, implement a, a departmental budget process. So we have budgets, but I, I'm finding out that uh, we kind of just allocate money, but we don't actually have a go through a stringent budget process, which I'm finding out now uh, with my first go, go around. We need to do better by that. And I think what you'll see, those conservative numbers that I gave earlier might even get better. Because as we start to really look at what we're spending our money on, we'll be even more uh, uh, particular because we want to get results for kids. Uh, review school sta staffing. I also found this out when we were looking at some financial pieces. We actually um, don't have a good process of seeing who is in our buildings um, and evaluating on a regular basis, like how many teachers do you have, who are your teachers, all of that. They're, that's not in place. And that hit me in the face. Um, and it was really concerning to hear that because, you know, naturally my mind is in March, every principal sits down with the finance team, the HR team, uh, and we talk about who's in your building, how many kids are coming, and you walk through that process to make sure you're right-sized. That doesn't happen here. Causes a lot of pause and a lot of bigger concerns around how we're uh, filling and, and, and making sure the right people are in the building because of staffing and, and again could get us in a lot of trouble if we're overspending. So this will be the first spring that we'll go through that but I just want to name that again transparently. That, that's a big concern for me and for that reason I want us to invest in a personnel audit um, and look at all the people and where they are throughout the district and how much money we're spending on personnel which is about 83 percent of our budget. Um, we, we will move forward with some of our partners that I, had, um, that I showed, and if you want to go to the Lorraine Promise page, you can see the partners that are up there by, uh, by commitment. So you can just take a peek, like who, who are we thinking about bringing on? Um, next meeting, I hope to share that out and so you can actually see what it's going to cost us, but most of those, uh, those spends will come out of, uh, out of our grant side of things because we have grant money we need to spend by the end of the year. And then outside of that, uh, I think one of my bigger tasks now that some of our chief team is starting to consolidate is spending more time with our local and national funders because in the event that we do not receive our, our levy, um, I want to make sure that we get everything our kids need. Uh, and I will find the money. I will, I will knock on, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg, he's not my friend yet, 
Um, and I got off of Facebook about a year ago, but I might get on just to send them, a, send them a text. But in all seriousness, we need to make sure our kids get what they need, and I'll find a way to make it happen. So what happens next? Most of you have seen this timeline. Nothing has changed on this timeline. We announced the budget on the 28th. I believe it was uh, announced at the, the board meeting. Uh, chiefs have been identified. You've seen those press releases go out, I hope. Um, that have our, our new chiefs and, and where they're coming from. Um, our district-wide pilots will be initiated. That's going to come through our task force meetings that are coming up, which I know you all received emails about. And then uh, we'll review what came out of those pilots for some of those different uh, groups that had pilots going on. And then May 10th will be the first draft of our full implementation plan. Again, I commit to getting to you by the 10th of May a plan to make sure we're doing the right things for the following year. It troubles me that in years past, the teachers are going home not knowing what's happening. Uh, I think it's unfair to our teachers who work so hard every single day in classrooms not to know what's coming and to be told something different in August. And I want that to change. Uh, so by May 10th, you will get that first draft. Uh, and lastly, I want to leave with some good news, and then we'll go to questions uh, very, very briefly. Um, but does anyone know what this means? You can go, you'd be a little louder than that. So I, I get a text Saturday, Saturday from Christine, uh, Miss Miller, um, about our kids who have not qualified for, you know, Lorraine City or for the region, not for the state, but for the world. They are going to worlds this year. And out of 2,000, 2,000 teams, they're 23rd in the world, in the world. So I, I, I stop there because this is what we should be talking about. This should be our conversation. And it will be our conversation. So in town halls, know that I always will start and close with something like that. And, I, and as I was coming in today, um, and I thought it was so timely, uh, Mrs. Miller gave me a letter that the scholars wrote to me because they wanted funding. They wanted all of the members of the team to actually go uh, to Worlds. And um, I, 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 I don't know what else to say, but uh, this letter is wonderful. And there's one particular part that jumps out to me that I think is indicative of what we as adults need to think about and do. Um, and it says, uh, in conclusion, the robotics team feels that we should stay together. Even though we have three robots that compete, we all work together. We are the Longfellow robotics teams. We are all one with Titan pride. We all show teamwork and communicate with each other. We all show respect and we know how to work with one another. Thank you for taking time to consider our request. We look forward with working, to working with you to make our goals a reality. So if you think about what our kids are saying to us, here's an opportunity to say back to them, we'll make sure that you meet your goals and make it a reality. So, thank you. So uh, I will take a few questions, and I lost my clicker that fast. Someone, where did I put it that fast? Um, but I, I'll leave this up. So if you want to just jot this down, so you can figure out, you know, where information is, you can always just go to that website. Uh, everything's up there. Nothing to hide. It's all there for everyone to see. But if you have questions, please. I, I think uh, Mr. Hawks is coming around to collect your questions, so we can uh, fly through a few. You have a card? You have a card already? We're gonna we're gonna read through the the cards. Can the conflict between the CEO and the Board of Education be repaired, and how? Great question. Um, I absolutely believe it can. I think there are fantastic individuals on the school board who care very deeply about their city. Uh, and I respect them 110% for that. I really do. Um, 
I think the, the challenges are, are, are more adult issues than kid issues. And as you know, and as you can see by, you know, the things that I tend to focus on, when they're not about kids, I don't pay attention. I just don't. Um, and I, I invite a conversation to talk about anything that the board would like to speak to. Um, I've made invitations. Um, and if you want, I can pull up my email and show you all of them. Um, and um, unfortunately, we just haven't gotten there, honestly. Uh, but I'm hopeful. Uh, you know, I hope that we can do the right thing by kids uh, and, and make sure we bridge the challenges that we might have and focus on the kids that we care about the most. Uh, what are your plans for K2 literacy? Love it. Who, who wrote this question? Focusing on kids. Where, who did? Yes, yes. High five, long distance. Thank you. All right. Uh, we need people in each building to work with struggling readers in grades one through three. Preschool will not solve the issue. We need more people in grades one through three. Uh, and then the second question is kickboard. Do, uh, Dojo sends info to... Thanks to the parents. Yeah. But it's my understanding that kickboard doesn't. So then how does that help with your communication? So I really want to go back to the first question. Right. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure I read both of them, and then I, I will answer them for sure. Um, so, yeah, so the plan for K2 literacy. There's the task force team that is meeting. The task force meeting is the 15th, uh, and that's a part of the discussion. Um, and so, again, I'm taking recommendations and conversations at 3.30. 3.30, um, about what we need to do for K2 literacy to make sure we're doing what's right by all of our kids in that space. Uh, the second question is, uh, Kickboard right now is being piloted in three schools, and if that's an issue and it doesn't work, we just won't keep it. Um, so uh, if it does, you know, it's one of those things why we're trying it now and not fully implementing it, because if it doesn't serve our need, why use it, right? But great questions, I love it. And I love, love your handwriting. I can tell you're an elementary, elementary teacher. I, when I was a middle school teacher, my kids were like, Mr. Hardy, what does that say? Um, transparency is a big question for staff. Why? Huh, I don't know why. Um, it's a great question. I, I hope, sorry, I'm getting back feed. I hope that uh, I'm not missing any signs of how and what information you need. Um, hence why I think one of the big things we need to do is survey and ask more questions of our teachers to make sure they're getting what they need. Um, and I guess it's all staff, maybe it's just not specific to teachers. Uh, but know that the best way to get information is this Thursday, or every second Thursday of every month. Ask me any question and then I will provide that answer to you. I, I have you know, no other great answer than that other than uh, I don't know why that feeling persists other than maybe we just don't have enough conversations. But again, I'm always open to them. Elena will tell you that my schedule uh, is full of meetings every, <laughs> way too many meetings. And then I try to slide in a 15 minute meeting here or there and then I get yelled at for good reason because uh, I, I need to eat um, at some point. Um, we have new students arriving from Puerto Rico. Their schools, discipline, and language are way different. How are we quickly getting them adapted to our grade levels? Fantastic question. Um, that's a big question. Two things, one of which part of, and again, it's, it comes back to pre-K to two, uh, we're thinking a lot about our bilingual classrooms, but also uh, Victor from El Centro actually just sent out an email, I want to say a day or two uh, yesterday, to talk a lot about this piece in addition to some other bilingual education pieces. So the long answer is there are things in the works, but is it quick? Is it a quick fix? Unfortunately, no. Um, I would love to have a quick answer to a problem that I just don't know how we can keep up. I was actually meeting with a councilman today talking about some of the challenges um, that we're seeing still in Puerto Rico um, and how it looks almost the same as it did after the hurricane. And so the, the chances of more kids coming is real um, and we need to take care of them. And so that's the plan that we're trying to put in place. Now I know that um, uh, Dr. Sturgill and Mr. Nimini did meet initially, and I think um, Doreen Morell was part of that conversation to kind of put a Band-Aid on it, but we do have to do a deeper fix. Uh, but those conversations are happening now. That's it. Oh, one more? Good. I needed to get my steps in. The other side was answered. The other side was answered. Okay. What grant was used to pay for Chief Family? Title One. What, what grant was used to pay for the chief family officer uh, position? It was Title I. Correct. You had your own answer on there. Fantastic. I like those questions. The question and the answer was on there. Yes, sir. 
why are you not attending the school board meetings? Great question. Um, so technically the school board, and I, I want to go back to that slide, if I can find my clicker. Where did I send my clicker? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I need to, you all need to come with me all the time. Um, sorry. And I promise, Jeff, I will get to that survey one second. Uh, this is probably an easier way to do this than the way I'm doing it right now. I'm sorry. There we go. So school board responsibilities are very different than mine. And so school board focuses only on levies and ta uh, tax abatements. They, that is their authority. My authority is around the ap operational, managerial, and instructional side of things. And our meetings are not the same meetings. So there really isn't a purpose for me to attend. Um, and so that's why I don't attend. I do attend, obviously, our ADC meetings because that's who I ultimately report to. Uh, the school board I do not report to. All right, so thank you so very much. Oh, we have a few more. Great. All righty. What new opportunities will there be for students entering Lorraine High School? Ah, oh, can I save this one for last? I can talk about this one forever. Oh, I want to save that one for last. Let me go to the other ones real quick. Uh, is Lorraine City Schools moving towards charter schools? Great question. No. Um, my question is the use of calling students scholars. When students leave our system and say they are scholars or they talk to students who don't know what they are talking about. Okay, so, so, so I, I think the question is why we call them scholars. Okay, so there's a few things. Um, hold on, let me check a drink of water for this one. Every day, um, and Robin Hopkins probably sees me way too often in her building. She's smiling nicely. She's like, if you don't get out of my building today. I interact with young people. Um, and a lot of young people walk with their heads down. And I stop them. And I ask them and tell them to keep their heads up. And in my conversations with them, it just shows that their self-esteem is at a level that doesn't match their unbelievable potential. And I think by elevating the name of students to scholars elevates their ability to strive for something greater. Um, so we, we think about some of the most important people, some of the greatest people that ever done great things in the world, they were road scholars. When you go off to college, you get scholarships. And I want our kids to realize the value in labels in the sense that people will label them because most of them because of the color of their skin differently than others. And I refuse to allow our kids to be seen as anything less than great. So the, the last question I have here, what new opportunities will there be for students entering, scholars, entering uh, Lorraine High School? It's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, so first and foremost, our, uh, there will be multiple academies. One will focus on the arts. Another will focus on uh, STEM. Another will focus on Early College Academy, which is a merger of our, our Titan College and bringing back Early College. Uh, we will have a Success Academy, which will combine uh, career and technical ed with some alternative services. And I'm missing one. Did I name five, Steve? Thank you. God, just always, just stay right here. Um, civic engagement. Um, or, I'm sorry, civics. Not civic engagement. Civics. Robin? Thank you. Okay, it is civic engagement. Community and civic engagement. So uh, in the ninth grade year, how we're branching this out in ninth grade year, we're going to just reboot our ninth grade academy. And every year after ninth grade, kids will then start to explore into one of those pathways. So the ninth grade year, if you can imagine, is more of like a, uh, a liberal arts kind of experience, like a general studies type of experience. And as the academies grow every year, again, we're not going to just jump into those academies. We're going to expand those academies over time until in four years from now, we'll have all of those those academies up and running and in place. So it'll be exciting to see more arts, uh, be exciting to see more career tech opportunities, we'll be excited to see STEM initiatives starting to begin um, and really enhance the learning experience for our kids because when they wake up every day, I don't know how many kids get really excited about calculus, but they get really excited about robotics. They get really excited about performing on stage. And so we need to enhance that experience for our kids so they can experience the things they deserve, so they can be prepared for the world around them. 
<laughs> All right. All right. If the board is responsible for levies and it affects the budget, at what point do you connect? Um, that's a great question. Again, the levies ha have very little to what I do. It's not under my purview. Levies are a conversation with the community. Um, and it's a community ask for or not uh, to see that it goes onto the ballot through their school board membership. And it's up to school board membership to push that forward. Uh, it is my responsibility to whatever decision the board makes is to react to it. Um, and so that's how that kind of works. That's a cycle to it. I cannot persuade them. It is not my job to, and it's, it's quasi illegal for me to go to the board and request it. I can't do that. Um, so it's literally a conversation between the school board and the community. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. We do have, and as I mentioned, we want to hear from you, and we want to make sure that we have some information from you. So there is a survey coming out to you. So if you could take a minute to fill the survey out, we would appreciate it. Um, and we'll take those questions through that survey if you have any additional ones. Thank you so very much. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV20, WLCS.